Hello, today we're going to talk about the best adhesives for patch making. Uh, I make patches like this one for my space over at Painted Tree. Uh, patches are really one of the most popular items that I sell there. Um, if you haven't already, please do go and check out my video where I talk a lot about how I set up the space at Painted Tree. It is an ever evolving process and it never feels done. Uh, anyways, this patch right here, I use the All Stitch Fusing Bond and I really do like the All Stitch Fusing Bond because it sticks well and it comes in different quantity amounts so you can get a small quantity if you want or a larger quantity if you'd like. Uh, the most popular one for home hobbyists is the Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. Uh, also, here's that all stitch here. So today what we're going to do is stitch out two patches, one with the Heat and Bond and the other with all stitch. And we'll see which one uh, takes the best to our material and the one that works the best. Uh, the third one I do not have here. It is from Madeira and it is an adhesive as well. I believe it is the 4220 of adhesive. That one is a good one too. However, it only comes in large quantities. So you might spend say 70 to a hundred dollars for their smallest quantity that they have available. And that's really not something that a home hobbyist or a, a small business would be purchasing as you have to buy such a large amount in order to be able to use the stuff. So that's why we're only going to go over the heat and bond and the all stitch. So without further ado, let's get to making the patches for this project. So I've already pre-hooped these hoops with patch twill and medium weight interfacing. All of the supplies that I use can be found in the description box below. But for now, I'm just going to speed through this stitch out that way we can get straight to putting the backing on the patches so i've got the two patches here the first one got messed up a little bit on the embroidery machine when the embroidery machine hoop kind of broke on me uh, but that's okay because this is just for a test so I'm going to use the heat and bond on one side and then the other side I'm just going to use the other all stitch material. So I have my heat and bond on this side and my all stitch on this side. The all stitch says to run an iron over this at 260 degrees but most people do not have an iron with exact temperatures on it so we really have to guess. I'm just going to use a high heat on my iron, which is this old iron I have here. Uh, it works great and it heats really hot, so I think this will work nicely. But if you don't have one of these, you can easily get one off Amazon. And I'll try to place a link to one in the description box below. Uh, this right here is the heat and bond. And the, for the heat and bond, it says to hold for two seconds uh, on the packaging. Uh, there's one thing that I don't like about the heat and bond already, and that is the fact that it comes in a roll instead of flat. Because it comes in a roll, it curls up like this, which makes it a little harder to iron it on. Uh, I'm just going to set my timer on my cell phone for two seconds, as it says on the packaging, and my timer is set. And I'm going to start it now. Well, that was quick. I'm just going to get it on this other edge here that didn't get pressed down. And as you can see, there's a little corner here that didn't get the stuff on it because it slid over because it was curled uh, and that is a bit of an issue it's the way that I got it from the store so we're just going to leave it like that and let it cool this one is the all stitch it came packed flat on a flat sheet with a piece of cardboard behind it so that it wouldn't get curled up I'm just going to press it down until it stays on the uh, material Thank you. 
and I'm going to let that one cool as well and then we'll come back and we will put it on some quilting cotton material and test it out and see which one of them does the best these appear to be cooled down enough so I'm going to go ahead and peel them this one is the all stitch one it's a pretty thick layer of glue on here that I can see hope you can see that on camera I went ahead and covered up this edge here because I don't want it to be an unfair advantage for this uh, I want them to both be even so really I should have just left it because I have that's how it was this also has a pretty good layer of backing but what I will say is that there is some cracking in here uh, in the material itself because once again it was folded it's in folded packaging and I think that that's one of the major issues with the heat and bond is that rather than laying it flat they give it to you in a roll like this and if they didn't give it to you in a roll then you wouldn't get the cracking uh, let's see if you can see this cracking on camera there's some cracking about right here where it creased because it was rolled up And that's just the way that I got it from the store. So, oh well. So let's keep them on opposite sides here. And I'm just going to iron both of them down. The heat and bond says to leave it for eight seconds. So I'm trying to leave it here for about eight seconds. The other one is over here. Now we're just going to let both of those cool and then I'll come back and we'll see how it did. Well, I have given this about an hour to dry and what I think is that both did an excellent job, but personally I tend to fall towards the all stitch more so than the heat and bond ultra because the heat and bond ultra, let's see if you can see this up close. There's a little bit of peeling there at the edges whereas on the all stitch there's virtually no peeling from the edges just a little bit right there but it stuck down pretty good and I ironed them on for just about the same amount of time so there shouldn't be a reason for one to stick less good than the other one but I think that the reason why the heat and bond doesn't stick as well is because it is it comes in a roll instead of being laid flat. And when the heat and bond is rolled up, it tends to stick to itself and melt in some places and actually has some cracking where some of the glue actually comes off so you don't get full coverage. And I think that's one of the main issues with the heat and bond versus using the all stitch which comes flat uh, so you don't have that problem and also the all stitch seems to be a little bit thicker uh, of a glue than the heat and bond ultra but please do let me know your thoughts about this in the comment section below and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to receive updates i really do hope that you enjoyed this discussion and I'll see you on the next one. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to receive more sewing related content.